Hello, welcome to the English translation of the FNOR talk, the political happenings in this crazy world. If you want to give us feedback, please join 27C3EN on Freenode. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, this is the FNOR news show, the Oh, Everything Will Be Fine edition 2010. The um, the sticker on the bottom says, because of the um, economy recovery, it's in white vision. The show is pre presented by Felix von Leitner and Frank Rieger. And I'm not sure, but I doubt that the masses of people in here don't danger, endanger the structural integrity of the building. Please don't stomp your feet. We'll start with the classics. The Franz Josef Strauss uh, Bavarian Politician Bailout Award. We are skipping this. Because, yeah, you know, it just costs too much money. And we can't finance and refinance it. Oh, sorry. There is no real need for any bailouts this year. All we had were a bullshit bingo wall. At, um, okay. Yeah, basically this is export optimization to see, uh, dump the prices, see that everything is getting cheaper abroad. Not, a, not locally, but abroad. Here, everything's getting more expensive. But if you buy it abroad, hey, it's surprisingly cheap. Keine Ursache. Sprach da gerade ein China-Produzent? Weil die Chinesen waren ja die Dinge. The Chinese was always claimed that they were dumping prices and doing everything cheaper, deducting the monetary value. But after it seems it was completely useless uh, complaining about it, hey, why can't we do it too? And so everybody's starting to de-evaluate their, uh, their currency. But we have a few more additional interesting offers. So one question is, where does all the money actually come from? I mean, we are sending around billions and trillions of um, huge numbers of money. And where does it come from? And here we have an interview with Bernd Bernanke, the fin US finance minister. And he says, what we are not doing is printing money. It's a total myth. Unfortunately, last year, the, exactly the same people said in a different interview exactly the opposite. Well, effectively, we have been printing money, and we need to do that. There's no real point in speculating f on people's bad memories. Um, it's not about truth or non-truth, uh, what polit politicians say. <coughs> so one important, important point in politicians is that to have to treat your partners well. They have to smile. The Dalai Lama was going out at the delivery entrance next to the trash bags. Well, because China might have upset. Nobody could expect that the press already was at the back entrance. New Indian ambassador got a very nice experience. The airport security did an extended pat down on her. If you see the, the pictures of her receiving the documents from the president. Well, 
she made it smile, but had other thoughts. It's quite a challenge to find um, a picture of an honorable person in bad circumstances. Diplomacy is an art of uh, a balance. So we have to think of the Pakistanis. The military delegation got a pat on as well. Well, it is said that there is somebody hiding in Pakistan. The military delegation was invited to the U.S. actually, so they did not come on their own, but they, wasn't, they were invited. And another political delegation got a naked scan. And they made a mistake by making a remark about, hopefully this will be the last flight. So the personnel took this as an offense and was scared. So actually this flight was to show them uh, friendship and so they, they were scared and then flew back home. There are all kinds of interesting stories from India and Pakistan, amongst others. There was a WikiLeaks incident. And everybody is using this to invent stories about WikiLeaks. And India and Pakistan both claimed about each other that their WikiLeaks or leak cables, that the other side would uh, invest into terrorism. We have a picture here. From, and there was no video of a Pakistani border ritual with the strange uniforms and the weapons. They're marching up to each other. And yeah, this looks like the Ministry of Funny Walks from Monty Python. Yeah, those uh, cable or the cables, the leaked ones, they were quite interesting, not only for Pakistan but also for us as well. Oh. It was said that you never know what's going to happen if Sarkozy is involved. You can see the picture. And we use this opportunity to show about what it is actually doing political, political negotiations. So you start small, some are a bit larger. And of course, we can't miss out on certain ones. And also the, the Chinese are involved. At the end, it's clear who wins. There are also local politicians who try to play, but you know, the gesture, it just doesn't work. And we've always been thinking about how Angela Merkel is choosing the man she's working with. And this gentleman was recently promoted to the, um, the chief of the Bavarian radio station, the local state-run television. Right. 
normally it is said that a successful uh, successful man will swap their wives for different for more for more beautiful more successful ones and you can see that Merkel does this too on the right you can see her new one This is a. Ah. Here you can see how the different options available to vote for Miss von der Leyen are um, several times well done or good. She did a good job. Supposedly, this is pro for the ones who are not certain which to choose, so just choose it again. And then one part of press work is to influence the news. The best option for this is probably to um, pass all bad news while the population is otherwise occupied. And the football club is always a good time for this. Let's see what was tried to be buried during the football cup. It's, it's quite surprising. Whenever most of the people are otherwise occupied, we're pushing through the the more debatable political changes, which have to be done, but we don't want people to complain about them. It's always worthwhile when there's things like a World Cup happening to see what other news are going on, see what else is happening, what things are happening at the margins. And there were things like a new, new rules on youth protection from the media. Um, there were cuts in state spending. And if there's nothing at hand, of course, you can well, just look for a time when, when everyone's in a good spirit and, and, and very forgiving and when no one has time. So let's look to Christmas. And what was the surprise at Christmas? There was an investigation committee on the Stuttgart 21 railway project. So let's just check who of you noticed what was said in that committee. Of course, we are representative. Now, which of you does not come from Stuttgart and still has noticed? No, those that did notice. Very few hands now. Now, about the World Cup, of course, there was an, an, an extra to that because we had an exit from the polit political stage. Um, Rainer Wendt, head of the German police union, um, um, no, okay, Wendt is still with us, someone else <coughs> left the stage. Well, he left us with this jewel, um, Rainer Wendt, um, called for a whole day in the Football League to be called off after the nuclear waste transports, which used up a lot of police capacity. But, of course, when there's nothing to hide, you can always choose to... Um, stage something yourself and one topic that was readily readily available was of course terror fear of terror which uh, was used as a precursor to the conference of the federal states interior ministers in Germany now there was the past letter bomb from some Greek anarchists addressed to the Chancellor uh, as a background music to that conference so we thought new times um, terror panic, of course, faded away after about two days. Normally, they stimulate for about a week, but, but so the, it's part of the cuts, basically. They don't need as much terror panic as they used to. The interesting thing is, was the detail of that particular panic, of course. Uh, we, we had police people with machine guns everywhere. And 
Yeah, Frank was at a station again, saw police people with machine guns, uh, and went up to them and said, wasn't that called off? Terra panic? No, he said, there's always terror panic. You can, you can notice where the policemen are staying uh, when you go, go to uh, your work in the morning they are staying on uh, one platform and if you come back uh, from work in the afternoon they, they are standing on the other platform so at least they are trying to, to be efficiently used so that they are simulating the security for the for the people Only yesterday there was a report that we are stormed by China Chinese Trojans. So China has internet and used it. So they, this was really on short notice, so they didn't make it to this next award. The clerk is the man in the suit. <laughs> he was a cyber security man or being under Clinton. But after he went to the private business, he, he uh, had uh, some digital Armageddon tourney. So he's a worthy man of giving this award a name. And German Minister Zierke demanded that ISPs should protect the computers uh, from viruses. And we need a hardware based uh, prevention of identity theft. <laughs> So the press department of the BSI, business software in, no. The only way to protect some, yourself from uh, attacks is to regularly update your malware on your computer. We are not sure if, if they mean the, the Bundestrojaner or not. But this year's award really goes to the US Army because they shot down a terrorist uh, website and afterwards it turned out that this uh, website was powered by the CIA. Normally you would think that the U.S. Army cyber warfare, they really know their stuff. But it seems they're actually not. They shut down 300 other servers in Texas, Saudi Arabia, and in the other world. You know how it's called, collateral damage. Uh, a IP cluster bomb. Ja, wo wir gerade bei Awards sind, ein Klassiker, den wir haben, ist der Richard M. Nixon Lame Excuse Award. One of the classics is the Richard M. Nixon Lame Excuse Award, and we have a few very nice ones here. I want to make uh, I want to make public. This was not my idea, but WikiLeaks bashing is totally totally worth it. When the finance advisor for Wikimedia Germany uh, stepped back because 
he can't cope with the hate mail anymore because people are uh, confusing Wikimedia with WikiLeaks. This was, yeah, a bit cheap. Ah, ah and here you can see Wikipedia is n WikiLeaks is not part of Wikipedia. The public announcement. But we think this is a really lame excuse. Really good examples for lame excuses are, of course, insurances when, whenever they don't want to pay. And this year, there was a British soldier who got a headshot wound during the battle against the Taliban, and the insurer refused to pay for this because, oh, it was only a flesh wound. And this is a scene from Menti Python where they explain that this is only a flash wound. The gentleman on the left has no arms anymore, but hey, it's just a flash wound. Yep, that's about how we would imagine the talk to the insurer. The Taiwanese politicians' were, uh, government was impressive as well. It seemed during the demonstrations, um, all the uh, the demonstrators shot themselves. No, no, it wasn't the government or the police shooting them. Uh, they must have shot themselves. Another one is data and privacy protection. Ah, the. Because of data protection, or because of data protection, it is not possible for the opposition to see the budget for the um, the um, the workplace programs for the of the German government. the The Pirate Party does not offer or does not support liquid feedback because of data protection. The German Politic Party, CSU, has a different variant of liquid feedback. This is the Bavarian Conservatives with their own very popular kind of liquid feedback. Also very nice, the uh, excuse from the Polish Interior Minister for the floods they had. This was blamed on the beavers an exclusive picture from a secret Polish countermeasure against those. You can see there at the lower right. So some of these things you think are so stuck, there's no way of getting out of those. One case in England in a park, a person was stabbed and called the police. The police came and beat him up. Stop. Now, the Brits, of course, have more surveillance cameras than they have inhabitants, so this was well visible in some, in some CCTV coverage, and the press uh, then blamed, talked to the police, head of the police, and asked them for well, their reasoning and said, and the response was, CCTV images never show the whole story. Uh, just look at that red bar below the video. The BBC warning watches that it contains some disturbing images. Now, of course, the public sector is, of course, versatile with excuses, but, but they cannot reach businesses. And uh, and BP, of course, was on top. Uh, when there were cases of sickness, of, of health problems with those people doing the cleanup in the Mexican Gulf, someone from BP was asked about this. And there you go, food poisoning is clearly a big issue, um, or the question of diet. So they, of course, earn the lame excuse award for this. Of course, you have to know the life expectancy of people that were working with the last large oil spill, 
the Exxon Valdez had a life expectancy of about 51 years. So that's at least 25 years less and less than the Chernobyl cleanup people had. But there is another we have to mention, although they will not get the award. The Chinese are learning too. There was a story. They slowly approach what you call, can call press or PR work. So an honorable mention, the police were beating up a woman. The beating lasted a long time. But then they noticed that this was some functionary's wife and said that was a complete mistake. They didn't actually apologize for the beating, just for beating up this particular woman. The Chinese, of course, they don't hold back when it comes to handling dissidents. They tore down this house, thinking, well, what the Israelis can do, we can all, of course, do as well. So what we actually want to get to with this is if, there's a, if you have a dissident Dissidents, that's the term you get to hear about in China. In Russia, you have government critics, opposition figures. There's always a political background. Of course, we've had elections in, in Belarus, and opposition people were jailed and, and beaten up, and the election didn't look very democratic. But you have to notice that they have learned from the Chinese in treating these things creatively. Um, a place where the opposition was going to demonstrate was simply flooded and turned into an ice rink in the winter. And the demonstrators then came and had salt. point of how to actually name the people that are demonstrating is uh, dictated by the context of where these people live. And below is there's uh, political critics. And if it's happening in Germany, then they are militant demonstrants, uh, autonomous people, left, leftists, and such like this. So. Pay attention that the, the reports actually are the same content, but you don't have to mention it in the country that's happening because you you can deduct in the country from the how the people acting are actually named. Hey, we have progress here in the democracy. So when uh, NATO had a meeting, they uh, announced that they will not use any cages. So if you look at the way the politicians talk about the people outside, quote, you cannot work together in Europe when the politics uh, is uh, connected with how many people are already protesting on the streets. Oops, Photoshop error. Interestingly, the politics is connected with how many people are protesting in the streets. And. Uh, Actually, it all depends on how the people react on police pressure. <coughs> and if you see the, the laws being in, in increased. Another problem for pure democracy, such as ours, is about, uh, our elections. And as we try with the voting machinery, actually went downward or went down. There's another option. 
if we can't automate the voting machines, maybe we can automate the electorate, actually. Rumors claim that this will be kind of a beta test during the next uh, government cycle. And you can already see the last candidate grinning in the background. Yeah, that one, that guy, Mr. Wolf. Re oh, really offer many, many chances for for ridicule, ridicule here. So you can see his wife is... Uh, she really has to practice the waving a little bit. You should also pay attention to the smiling faces of the people in the back. Uh, are we supposed to do anything or do we keep just standing still? Oh shit. Very nice as well the story when Wolf was in Russia um, during a dinner at a local governor with a funny name of with a translated name which would mean something like lettuce or salad in his uh, dinner in the starters there was actually a little warm in there and this was treated around and the Russians they have their own kind of humor, our own sense of humor and one comment w from the governor was well you know this is this actually shows how fresh the food was Oh, and the correct translation of the I wish you or uh, yeah, I wish you a very nice dinner translates literally as let's starve a little warm. So this is our own sense of humor here. We should also remember why Mr. Köhler, a German politician, actually stepped down. Um, it seems he stepped, the official reason for his stepping down was a quote where he current, he described the current uh, German army politics where they cl uh, claim that one of their jobs is to keep the, um, to keep, what is it, uh, economic, um, in, or to protect economic interests. And the current one, Mr. Gutenberg, he is claiming the same, that the job of the German army is to protect uh, economic interests. It's the same, but it seems he didn't step down yet. And nobody's asking for it yet. But we'll see how his, how his rise in German politics will continue. And we don't really care why they are stepping down as long as they are stepping down. So, it seems he, he's practicing and looking towards his role models. Mr. Gutenberg, our defense minister. It's not that easy to find nice pictures of Mr. Gutenberg because he has always this, this kind of glazed eyes grinning into the distance. Uh, we did find a nice one here. <coughs> You ask yourself, what does this German army actually do there in, in Afghanistan? We had, uh, are they chasing dinosaurs, uh, ensuring Germany's meat supply at the Hindu Kush? We had an, have some exclusive photo material of what our soldiers do in Afghanistan. This is from, from the head command. And also, it seems like uh, it's, it's all about drug supply, it seems, as you can see here. A nice plantation there, have a bit of fun as a Santa Claus. And of course, it's about exporting our cultural values, isn't it? You have to provide presents and, and, and carry them around and drive them around and have an efficient way of, of delivering them. About the drug thing in Afghanistan, why do we have to defend things there? Now, of course, there's more and more resistance against that, and, and, and there's questions what will happen if we withdraw and uh, the, the people.
people were basically living from, from growing poppy seeds and until Afghanistan was supplying about 130% of the world's opium needs and the price was just dropping limitlessly and the CIA of course did not like that um, then it had to be a solution and the solution was then suddenly can someone switch off this silly alarm clock please <laughs> some alarms ringing terror <laughs> still ringing everything under control no reason for hysteria as our interior minister says there's reason for concern but not for hysteria is there a blinking anywhere now to just translate the article there on top of the picture it's about some some plant disease uh, eradicating or destroying half of the poppy seed harvest uh, that's the headline there okay we'll continue now there was a huge oversupply in opium more than the world needed and and of course heroin was ah <laughs> they found the source of that sound you see we have professional teams for everything even for disarming alarm clocks okay now back to Afghanistan first look top left look at the section under the, which this article was published which I unfortunately cannot see from here economy economy it was okay there was there was this high supply of opium leading to a high supply of heroin and suddenly someone was just buying the whole heroin supply and, and buying the four times the world need for heroin was price went up again and everyone was wondering what's going on here and the next step then was this suddenly there was a fungus uh, fr from nowhere that was attacking this poppy seed and you can speculate whether what happened but opium and heroin prices have been saved and the CIA can uh, refinance their black budgets now the thing about efficient police work and in fighting drugs you could be seen in Brazil as well There were several uh, favelas um, cleaned of uh, people and uh, many drugs were found. Well, yeah, you can see here that a lot of progress has been made. Can you please stop running around with some bombs here? There's a very nice story about Mexico. It's a very big land for drug transit. And here's in this map shows how uh, cocaine travels through Mexico. And there were several people in Mexico quite pissed and he talked some um, clear text, which you can read on the slide. We said that this is a problem. In California, there was a new law to illegalize um, marijuana products, but this did not pass. But why didn't it pass? And we were researching on this, and obviously, huge masses on cash were actually spent by people who are um, delivering the drugs to stop this law. So this was also financed by, n not only by the drug producers, but also by breweries. <laughs> the Mexicans are overwhelmed with dealing with this and uh, can't deal with the problem, so they are trying some unusual things. There were some police officials who tried to who tried to defend themselves by some 
um, bizarre rituals that you can see here. <coughs> Unfortunately, we didn't find anything about uh, buttering chickens. But there was something that involved uh, putting blood of chickens at the beach on people. And if you have a look at the news that coming from this area, it is very much understandable why the, all this is happening. There are some uh, police officials who all retreated from their job after their office has been shot, as you can see here. Well, we have this. And um, the murderers that are going around there, they were already in prison. They had a perfect alibi, but the prison director let them out. Um, and they gave him a car and weapons. And, um, and the surprising thing for me was that they came back and Um, there is honesty among criminals, and they had an alibi. What we see in the picture here is uh, a Mexican local saint who has a large following these days, and the government is trying to suppress the cult about this saint because uh, he's actually revered by the drug gangs mostly. And uh, the security of prisons uh, is a continent-wide problem. There are different methods there. Uh, here is an illustration of a news item from an Argentinian prison where two inmates climbed the wall at, at the control tower. And, and it turns out that the, all they had on the control tower, a watchtower, was a, a puppet, which we try to illustrate in this one. Well, everyone has to make cuts these days. That's how it is in a recession. Uh, one more award that we have um, for things like this, the um, Walter Ulbricht, former <laughs> former head of, the, of East Germany, Walter Ulbricht Award for democratically legitimized building management. Uh, one, one, a few people among us will know what, what's coming now. After the wall came down, of course, we thought, now this is the end of this huge war thing. Maybe some people in North Korea are still at it and are still getting some pleasure out of doing it. But no, even the border between the US and Mexico these days is fortified by uh, things like this. What we see behind this Jeep, it, it draws tires behind it to plain a strip of sand so that people can see footprints of people trying to escape uh, to, to across the border. And there are rumors that East German experts have been involved in, in building this. So we have this award for democratically legitimized building works. These are the East, Borden, East German border defenses. And someone uh, protecting a building site has obviously not at all thought through how this is to be protected. I didn't catch which building site it is, if someone can help me. Um, but it must have, someone must not have thought this through properly. Okay, we have got yet another award, the Milky Shelley Award, for maximum distance to reality. You might know Shelley, probably not if you're not German. Milky we just choose because of the photo. So there we have a very hot image with this great title page. The focus was not the only page uh, writing, says, writing positive news. The site uh, also wrote that Germany, in Germany nearly everybody is employed. 
but we don't know what they are smoking, but it can't be something that expensive because journalists are not earning that mu much money. Perhaps journalists from economy magazines have more money. So there was a very great news that Ryan Metall, who is, which is producing tanks, gets agrar subventions uh, from the European Union. Uh, the tanks were also um, declared as agriculture goods in some smuggling attempt. This is also a candidate for the award, our in Minister for the Interior. The uh, holy um, symbol above him is the uh, logo of the police um, um, police uh, union. And what happened is that a little later you could see in the news how complete the victory over, over the terror panic is. Some passengers uh, in a train that got stuck thought it was a, a terrorist attack. I heard uh, ob often from people in trains uh, who got hectic and were about to call the conductor and because someone put uh, his suitcase down and then we went to get to eat something. So they called him and thought, oh, it's a bomb. A great victory over the terrorists. A great also, uh, great Deutsche Bahn also got a great victory over the terrorists. Um, look at the delay time in the yellow marked area. That's uh, what they're laughing about. But also the Deutsche Bahn uh, can't keep up with the winner of the ball for the maximum distance to reality because George W. Bush said in um, his memoirs because he was he wrote that he was a dissenting voice. No one was more shocked, sickened and angry than I was when I didn't find the measures of mass destruction. A national, another tradition we have is the Invi Inspector Clouseau Award for ex uh, good police work. And a hot uh, runner-up is the, uh, the Air Marshals in the U.S. who um, we found out that significantly more Air Marshals who sit in the trains and play police were um, imprisoned um, because they did something wrong then more, there were significantly more of them than people who they arrested for some wrongdoings. Yeah, that's not, you know, that's not a little thing. It's human trafficking rings and stuff like that. And explosives from Afghanistan. Uh, you should think, well, that's, we've got the air marshals for that. That doesn't happen, but exactly that, what, uh, that is what happened. Great are also the Brits who are playing around with uh, something. We are illustrating, that's the press photography of, uh, of a drone manufacturer in Britain. It's a different drone, but we uh, joined that. And it, uh, the drone is to be used in, um, towards um, fly passing, fly tipping, abandoned vehicles, abnormal, abnormalities, and waste management. Brits want to use uh, military drones for now. Of course, everybody sees the point of that. Uh, but it's not so easy with those drones as the Americans detected lately. One of those drones that they had that is equipped with Hellfire rockets, the software that runs them is very complex, has a lot of components. And one of those components is the targeting. And of course, we know how it works with software and deadlines are hard to m meet and it's not so easy. And then there was a company that makes that software and they thought, wow, well, these are rockets. Maybe the software shouldn't be total crap. Maybe there is a little bit of a requirement for accuracy, 
but um, they were the sub 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 contractor for that in that big chain, and they just didn't finish it in time. And the contractor basically said, "Oh yeah, fuck it, uh, let's reverse engineer the software that is not complete and sell it that way." And that's what they did. And there was a funny case where the copyright claims from that company um, revealed that this reverse engineering had occurred and that the effect of the software was that there was an inaccuracy of about more than 10 meters. And um, so the next house, if we're talking about Afghanistan, and they knew it and they still used it. So, and that kind of reminds me of socialist times where under all and anti circumstances you, you did took certain measures details 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 and for the due to try to bump on an airplane with a bomb in his pants because of whom we have to use all these naked scanners was actually not supposed to be flying and he was listed on several watch lists but he could fly because there was uh, a directive that um, this guy should be allowed on the plane and the guys who were doing the visum stuff for this guy said you know that wasn't our fault we didn't grant the visum for him The official reason from the Secret Service was that there was, uh, were some more investigations and if the visum did not, would not have been granted, then that would have been disturbed. Not only in foreign countries, there are interesting things that need to be mentioned here. So in this case, a minister in in Germany said that there should not be a decision by a judge when there is a need to to analyze blood from people so he said that it should be possible from any person to take blood samples at any time Obviously, people in Lower Saxony uh, are g think they are getting rich because they are g uh, by getting thrown into jail. <laughs> so we had a little lapse here. Also, a big runner-up for the Recluso Award is the police inspection in Passau, who um, they ab apparently they slept through a shootout in their police uh, um, office. Um, the others slept in the no another room while uh, uh, someone was um, shooting around in another room. So obviously, uh, well, liquid feedback in Varavia, they were uh, drinking enough to sleep enough. So the, the special forces of the German police um, are the winner of this spectacular award. They um, while while uh, getting behind the um, they uh, while finding and hunting down the Saulas terrorists, they actually uh, f f fell over their own uh, clothing. So that uh, brush over there is the is a sharpshooter, a sniper. So one of the police uh, ran aw uh, one terrorist ran away, but the police couldn't follow him because they're. Uh, equipment was too heavy. So we were already speculating on whether this uh, briefing was incorrect and and all of the, the total wrong equipment that they were wearing. And um, so from internal sources, we received a picture of the future equipment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Well, in generally, we have a very interesting uh, relationship with police. And one of the things that we are looking at for a long time is that police get numbers for identification. So if you get beat up by them, you can say in front of a court that this was the person that actually beat you up, bet you up. And our fight was not very good until we had a case in Berlin where they finally decided that the police will get a unique number. And And we will show you now how well that works in practice on the right-hand side. Note, this is not a police number. This is a team number. So you don't even know who, which policeman is, but check the numbers, match them. And you will notice, not even that works. Especially interesting was uh, why they didn't want a unique number. And one of those reasons was that you could read it incorrectly, and uh, also, most also, but police is always within law and order. So that was a waterproof argument. And Titanic, a German satire magazine, had a great idea. The sign actually says, you're being beaten by Mr. Random. So um, in one year, we will tell you how this uh, how well this works. At this moment, um, there are cases where police ID wasn't really required. And notice, he, he's a, a helper, a, a medic. He wasn't actually a policeman. So the third already claimed that they have nothing to do with that. <laughs> so the voluntary units from the police are not affected by this rule. So you can guess who will be used um, on demonstrations. Actually, this is just work anyway. We have to save money. Perhaps that's something that uh, people invented because they had nothing to do. There are some ways to try to avoid uh, from these clashes. And uh, in the uh, USA, they have the concept of the First Amendment area. And this is an area like in a park somewhere far away from the actual area where people want uh, to um, to, to have the event, but um, they say, you know, here you, can, here you can do your event and it's cool, and um, here we can see this first amendment zone in Toronto, where it compared the number of policemen to the people demonstrating here. The same here for the Castor transport. According to this, the police is always very close to the uh, people. This here says, uh, always one step closer to the people. Let the children come to us. Let the children come to us, harder to the people. Well, CDU wants to have liquid feedback used by the police as well. Well, plus, please remain Remember, it's not that easy to be a driver for a water cannon. So you sometimes need to relax, and this is a book written by Ciro Sarazin, which has been criticized in Germany a lot. So sometimes uh, some pictures appear in the press like this, so that even as a trained police uh, spokesperson, you can't do it that much. And uh, my personal favorite is th this one, where you know that you're lost as a police press speak spokesperson, is when pictures like that come. And you can explain what you want, but that's, there's nothing left for, sp uh, for spinning there. 
So my personal favorite from the cluster like nuclear transport is this pretty picture. Well, while all, most people have overviewed the context, it must have been terrorists because uh, short beforehand, Osama bin Laden uh, ordered his people to use more uh, agricultural means and uh, uh, cultivate land. Some uh, strange things from the Middle East we are used to, but um, but sometimes, so, th one thing we have to mention here, um, Hamas said we got, uh, we seized uh, a delivery of libido increasing gum, chewing gum in Gaza that was to be smuggled into uh, Gaza by the Israelis and, uh, and spoiler youth. And uh, look at the advert in the top left, uh, fun to chew. Also great was the news from the neighbor Egypt, but uh, we didn't get the actually didn't get the news. But uh, the Dementi, but the Mossad had to deme to denounce that uh, they are responsible for the shark attacks in Egypt. Um, but we fought, <laughs> found an exclusive photo from a Mossad fighting shark uh, in training. <laughs> What really happened is that a animal transport from Australia that was transporting sheep to a uh, victimizing thing. Um, but maybe, maybe the Mossad was involved here, obviously. Obviously, the Mossad. So funny thing with the Secret Service is always the, the coordination between CIA and the Pakistani Secret Service. Um, but there was a situation where a Taliban was put in prison. and. Um, they, they figured out that he was doing peace discussions without the ISI's permission. And um, so, of course, that is totally unacceptable. Afghan, um, Afghanistan said they rather discuss with people who pretend, with pretenders. And we have a nice picture here. They, it took them months to figure out that they're discussing with a Taliban who is just a pretender. He, he, he got a lot of money, um, and it turned out that he is like just a shop owner somewhere. Oh, but that works fine for me, so I'll keep doing that. Of course, um, you have to go a bit further into the archives to figure out what happens or how these politicians feel. and. Uh, how the decision making works. Here's an exclusive picture. This is the former CIA director, George Tenet, um, who was under Bush. And, well, he tries to express himself clearly here. And, uh, by the way, speaking of um, PR debacles, um, there's a nice example between South and North Korea. Here's a good picture. Um, this is the um, Ministry of Defense, uh, Mr. Minister of Defense, on the island that was shot on by North Korea, and these are the super extremely dangerous um, grenades. And when you look at it, these are thermos. And of course, later they were kind of embarrassed. But well, even in Germany, this not, this not only happens in Germany, but in, in at the airport in Hanover. There was uh, an artillery grenade, and um, it turned out to be something completely Th thermal different. Flask. It was a thermos as well. In South Korea, you need to know. Thermal flask. So very nice is also the non-definable liquid, undefined liquid. And in South Korea, there's also a parliament and democracy, and they have some more action than we have here. Here's a nice picture series of the opposition trying to get into a committee where the governing parties were locked themselves in. It looks pretty harmless, but now it gets a little bit more sporty, and they try to get in there, and they have some tools, tools that they found, and 
can try to get in there with. And they have surprisingly stable doors there as well. And they tried it, but then they fought back with fire extinguishers. And a few kilometers further, someone thought, wow, this democracy is a great thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, of course, Kim is, well, he, he, of course, is one of the more colorful dictators of this planet. <coughs> I'm just sorry for the people that have to suffer from his strange habits. For example, when this conflict was with South Korea and, and they were firing at artillery, artillery grenades against each other, well, he thought, what shall we do today? Let's visit a factory for soy sauce. And of course, he's, uh, he follows the tr his father's tradition. He was kind of a hero there. And, and obviously, he, has, he seems to be giving the right hints for keeping up soy sauce production in hard economic times. But he wasn't just visiting soy sauce factories. Uh, he also visited canteens, inspecting them. And they do have a serious food problem there. People are actually starving regularly because they have don't, don't, enough, don't have enough food and the money is being put into nuclear programs and or disappears somewhere. So money is hard. So they thought, who has got money these days? Ah, the Americans. So. There they went, looking for $75 trillion in compensation. So thought, well, we thought, well, this reminds us of someone. It took us a while. A dictator. There was this movie, wasn't there, with trillions and, and quadrillions. <laughs> and it turns out that this is not the only parallel because his son, uh, di dictators, sons, dictators and their sons, that seems to be a difficult thing anyway. There's another example that someone who is actually excelling by a certain colorfulness, Mr. Gaddafi, and his son in Switzerland uh, seems to have beaten up his female servants, was put in jail for that, and uh, his photo was then published in the newspapers which made Gaddafi declare a holy war on Switzerland, um, calling them the infidels, uh, saying that the jihad has to be declared on them by all means. And everyone doing business with Switzerland was an infidel that against Islam. And he also proposed what should be happening to Switzerland after they were beaten. And you see the map there dividing up Swiss territory amongst its neighboring countries. Only Austria didn't get anything. But then the Swiss, of course, aren't that stupid themselves. They made their own propositions, extending Switzerland a bit. And then suddenly a mystery cleared because we were wondering why the why the mountain forces don't seem to be facing the cuts in the military budgets, but it does seem that they have a, still have a task to fulfill. While we're in Switzerland, uh, they do have, the elections there are a, a specific thing. They had an internet election in some city there. The choice was be between just one candidate and nothing, not just that one candidate. You can actually enter the thing was that you could enter other candidates, but they couldn't just get into the, into the software. Uh, the quote was, uh, whoever would want to vote for other people could always go back to the paper version. So the freedom of election was actually not restricted. And of course, the, in Switzerland, sometimes there's a bit more of a sad case. Um, out of the sequence, we like to have uh, suicides. No connection, says the head headline. There was an informer um, leaking tax data to, from Switzerland to the German government.
government and, and there was a clear case of suicide that one of these informers died. Then there were the inmates in Guantanamo who died, clear cases of suicide, of course, people committing suicide with their hands tied behind their backs and, and cloths in, in, in the mouths and were found hanging. Of course, very clear, completely synchronous in cells that did have no visual, no connection in sight, clear cases. Another one was this, this analyst of the British surveillance secret services who was found stabbed in his London flat, packed into, his, into a bag, <laughs> and hang on, stop. And the key for the lock of that bag was found under the bag. The, the worst case of suicide we have ever seen. There was also a deputy um, general of the Russian Secret Service uh, who uh, died of a bathing accident or swimming accident and was washed ashore in the Turkey. And uh, the Polish uh, rumored that he was killed in the bath, uh, bathtub and then uh, thrown into the sea. So there was also a Gazprom analyst uh, who was who shot himself in, within his uh, closed and um, armored car with a gag in his mouth in with uh, the pistol he got from the Kazakhstani Prime Minister. Um, well, it's all, they all have problems. You always have to see that uh, the, see the, the money of the, of the Secret Service is also running low, so the, uh, the polonium is uh, running low, so uh, there's a case with uh, Quicksilver, and um, to, there were two former Secret Service people from Russia who in Ber found in Berlin with totally uh, over-the-top um, Quicksilver um, levels in their blood. So we um, showed a, a picture of a common source of Quicksilver in the household. That's an energy-saving lamp. So uh, a web activist from white Russia, Belarus, was found hanged. Um, uh, obviously, his uh, friends said he would never have hanged himself. And the only for picture that could be found of him uh, is obviously uh, the picture where he was just uh, shot while I've photographed while being arrested. So that's a little sad for you know an activist's life. So Sherlock Holmes Award for in, uh, extraordinary insight. And our first candidate for that is uh, a thing from the OSCD. Germany is the most important money laundering country. Question. Whoever had a 500 euro bill in his hand? Oh, a lot of hands go up. So who are these people in the audience? It's unbelievable, you drug dealers, you. Yeah, oh, you printed it yourself. Okay, perfect, that's fine. Well, there's about as many as uh, 100 um, euro bills. Also, the German tire industry had an interesting insight. Well, we have this nice law that requires you to use winter tires, blah, blah, wumble, mumble, hard winter. And um, we also had the cash for clunkers system. Well, a lot of people, a high demand, no, totally unexpected. So we ran out of winter tires. And there's a nice case also from the WikiLeaks cables. Our um, Minister of the Exterior, um, as we learned from the cables, um, there were sanctions against Iran, and he mentioned, well, we didn't, we, we did not really perceive any goodwill there at present. And it is the biggest customer for oil from China. So why they shouldn't buy the oil at all? Nobody really thought about it. You, you can see that Westerwelle, the German politician, was surprised. Look at the Chinese face expression. He also has a lot of fun with Westerwelle, as it seems. And the Americans are sometimes surprised about um, German 
Westerwelle, and they ask him, like, where does he get his policy direction from? So the, his political line. So some of the employees at the ministry ask themselves this question, and there's an illustration for it. And the Sherlock Holmes Award for interesting insights is um, we have Vivian Redding, who realized during negotiations with the EU, um, with the USA, about privacy. Oh, the USA only want our EU data. Nobody could expect that. <laughs> totally unexpected and surprising. It's also interesting, if this woman is angry, something can happen. She's the one that killed roaming fees after she was affected in person. So there's a little bit of hope left. And how well Americans can take care of their own data is something you can see when Clinton lost his nuclear launch codes temporarily. They were somehow gone for several months in a row, not just lost for, tem for a moment and comes back. No, it was gone for a couple of months. And only after the relevant agency f asked about it, when the new, came, new ones came, they asked, like, where's the old ones so we can destroy them? And then he mentioned, yeah, like, hmm, I, um, to be quite honest with you, <clears throat> uh, I think we have to report something here. Oh, well, nuclear launch codes thinking they're probably the same as us because what we are thinking then is clearly is this and um, we did have to swallow hard a bit because when we were scrolling on and, and saw this well they start early getting educated don't they so the last award now the Balls of Steel Award. <laughs> well, there were a few candidates there. For example, this football fan for the <laughs> Dutch team. No, this is a German football fan in front of Dutch fans, I'm sorry. And then there was this lone dissident in Tehran when Mr. Ahmadinejad visited a university. The translation you see there, polytechnics is not your place. And he is a fascist. <laughs> we don't know if the translation is right, though. Definitely a hot candidate were the people that abseiled from the bridge where the nuclear waste transport was passing over, holding up the transport for quite a while. On the left picture you see how high that bridge is. And there were a bit of a strange case here, even for our standards. A student throws a dog towards Hell's Angels members, is what the headline says. A 26-year-old went to the grounds of the club and pulled down his shorts and threw a young dog at, for, at, at the people. That's, that's what you see, you see what cuts in the health sector lead to. We have to go on, we have, we are beyond time. Next case, uh, this guy of course does not have much to fear because he is actually a diplomat still. It was a diplomat from Qatar in his plane, he wanted to have a smoke, went to the toilet, lit a cigarette and of course in planes these days that sets off an alarm. So that led actually to defense with fighter planes starting. The excuse was he was actually trying to light his shoes.
They have a strange kind of humor in Qatar. And then there was this. <laughs> Definitely a hot candidate is uh, the um, Um, someone for the for an organization called Sea Shepherd it was run over by a, a whaling ship, and he let another ship bring him to the ship, climbed the ship's walls, hid in the ship, and at the right moment, he presented them with a bill and a, an arrest warrant on this Japanese whaling ship a bill for the destroyed ship that he had been on before. And then we have another candidate, which unfortunately we had to disqualify because that could have led to misunderstandings. It's not, not so good really to give balls of steel awards to, to this particular candidate. Another honorable mention goes to Greenpeace, of course, for the thing with the beer lorry which they used to block the nuclear waste transports in the autumn in Germany. They drove a beer lorry onto a crossroads, an important crossroads, and then within that beer lorry they had a concrete structure that they lowered onto the street. It has to be said that police logistics was actually lacking in this case. Uh, they didn't have food and drink, the police people, so of course they led the beer lorry through. But the winner of the Balls of Steel, Steel Award is, this, is an unknown hacker which, who on 170 minarets in, in Turkey hacked the radio transmissions of the um, prayer radio and played the music of a gay Turkish singer who performed in women's clothes, is known to perform in women's clothes. <laughs> and we we asked an expert about this A hacker like to hack something says our interior minister and this is it <laughs>